I'm sure that um, <coughs> through our administrator, you guys were given a proposal that came to us from Macedonia. Um, you guys are all aware that starting early June, Mayor Miglarini reached out to all three communities, being Northfield Center, Sagamore Hills, and Northfield Village. Early January. Yeah, early, what did I say? June. Oh, sorry. Early January. Um, so, with that being said, we had a meeting, when I say we, um, one representative from each community met February 23rd in Macedonia. Northfield Center had a representative there. Mayor Nihaz was there. I was there. Um, it was a, a lengthy discussion. As I mentioned at our um, January meeting, I believe, um, the mayor's looking for ways to uh, streamline the cost of services that communities are duplicating. So um, his email came out, and uh, we all met on the 23rd. And he wants to start, his proposal was to start with regionalizing fire. So uh, he had asked everybody to send over their call volume. I did so. And he came out with a proposal that I'm pretty sure uh, Chief Hayes gave you guys. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at it over the weekend. Yeah, I did. I, I have a few questions, though. First of all, this is pretty well done. Uh, you know, thank you for the work you've done on this. And one of the questions I had is, you know, he says facility for housing, region, and medic. What are some of the options, and where would that be? Well, my uh, my first thought was that uh, we have the park building across the street. I think that uh, it's well equipped now. Water, sewer, bathroom. Um, that's an option. And I think it's an option we should look at. I don't know. Again, I don't know what other communities have responded. So. I think that that building could be retrofit very easily to house an ambulance and a fire truck. Okay. So. Okay. And just just so you know, um, in Mayor Nehaus, he he was seemed pretty ambitious about it, and uh, his his comment was that we would be doing our residents a disservice if we didn't explore this as an option. They're facing uh, having to purchase a new ladder truck at the cost of a million dollars. Macedonia needs a new ladder truck at the cost of a million dollars. So with three communities in such a close area, two million dollars plus for the same piece of equipment in each community is crazy. When you said housing, I mean, it's, it's his uh, thing says, what is this? Uh, we would have two to, two, to, two, to three, two to three people um, would be housed in the building across the street. So um, we would have the benefit of a 24-7 full-time crew, um, two to three firefighter paramedics, two at minimum, um, and then also five firefighter paramedics that would be on staff in Macedonia, which we kind of have that now with mutual aid. Um, and obviously all the equipment, chief, captain, fire prevention, you know, it's, it's pretty much in, in his, uh, in the handout that he had sent. Okay. So. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else off the top of my head. And I, to me, the numbers work. I think we're looking at a, a five-year commitment. And if you take our costs, and I think Paul Paul's more of a numbers guy, but I think if you take our costs currently and, and you can fix those costs for a five-year period, right now um, we're facing the same thing, as you guys know, with the district, with duplication of equipment, Duplication of you know repairs on a building, possibly a new fire station at the cost of a minimum of three million dollars, split between two communities, us in Northfield Center. So, right. But I, I, after after I seen it over the week, and I kind of did some rural research myself, and um, I found a quote from Senator John Eklund from the state of Ohio. He kind of says that this is the result of that the global governments become more efficient if they think they. Can think more create creativity, have creativity in their thinking about how they can you know operate their jurisdictions and how they can provide services that need to need to be provided all the better because of the efficiency was part of the reason the state lawmakers they approve these cuts in the local government funding. So local government funding is kind of cut and is forcing the local communities to kind of move in that direction to save money and not duplicate services. 
I mean, the city of I mean, Congo Heights also they had to do some. They had to collaborate their services too to save money. Right. Right. So it's happening everywhere. Yeah. So, and I think the initial thing for when this district was formed, if I'm not mistaken, was the initial thought process was to eventually lead to a community-wide regional fire district. That makes sense. In order to, to defray the cost amongst four communities rather than one by itself or two just two together. Again, we're four communities so close together and Macedonia has a fairly new building. Obviously Northfield Village building is new. The center's building, I mean it is what it is. You know, it's 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 meant to do it, it serves a purpose, but again, I don't, I don't think it's 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 outlived its usefulness. Well I can tell you this, uh, our number one problem uh, in the fire district for the last year and a half has been staffing. And that's pretty much what reiterated at every meeting. We're, we're having a hard time uh, keeping personnel. And uh, even at the last meeting we discussed it. And what I did is when I got the proposal, uh, I got our fiscal officer here. I asked him to go over the numbers with me. And I don't know if you folks know this. The fiscal officer... That it's, this is not part of his job. He volunteered to go over the numbers. He's a separate elected official. He has designated things that he has to do. He took a lot of time out of his busy day to sit down and crunch the numbers with me, just in case for the oops factor. So I want to give I want to give kudos to him because uh, he didn't have to do that. He stepped up to the plate and he went over the numbers. And, he, and here's the numbers. Our proposal for Macedonia is seven hundred fifty thousand a year. Now last year, with uh, our payment for last year was six hundred and forty-six thousand. Of the six forty-six, four four uh, four hundred sixteen thousand went to payroll. Two hundred thirty thousand went to all other costs of that money. But here's where uh, it's going to go up in the next five years. We had to this year. We pretty much are rolling with a fifth man. That's going to add fifty-five thousand to that six forty-six every year. That's our so share. Right? That's going to be our share for the fourth man. Now, starting next year uh, in in November, we discussed a five-year plan for capital equipment. And Scott and I picked it apart. But if you look at the five-year plan, it comes out to one hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars a year for five years in a row on capital equipment. That's our portion. That's our portion. So then starting next year, if we address the problems with the fire station, if you just tried to renovate it, now there's, there's, I'll get to that in a minute. If you tried to renovate it, it's 80000 a year for five years. Then if you look at the breathing apparatus equipment, it's, it's titled SCBA, it's for the breathing, that's 20000 a year for five years. So in comparison, when you're looking at Macedonia, they're saying 750. We would pay at a minimum 928 if, if you could freeze our cost from last year for five years, and if you could not have any salary increases. And those are not realistic, but just to show you, at 928, freezing those. So we crunched those numbers. <coughs> Excluded from this when we went over it. We have a 2007 Silverado we didn't put in there, a 2007 Crown Vic we didn't put in there, a 2008 Ford Ambulance that we didn't put in there. We didn't put in a, a new exhaust fan, that's another 30 or 40 Gs. And then in our, uh, our uh, capital improvement outline, they said because of electric renovations to water and sewer costs, right now they're unknown, along with a total roof replacement, the district may have to decide to repair or replace. Well, we talked. If we repair it, it's about 80 grand a year for five years from us. If we replace it, instead of paying 928 with freeze with the freeze, which isn't going to happen, but if we did that, going at a two and a half million fire station, it would be one million one hundred eighty-one thousand for five years. If the fire station were to be, say, a three and a half million dollar fire station. You're looking at one million three hundred fifteen thousand dollars for five years. That's all up from six forty-six. 
So to me, uh, when I saw the numbers and looking at what were our five-year projections starting, and it's going to start next year. Either way, it's right off the bat, whether we go to Macedonia or we stay, the worst, the minimum, the minimum we could expect, if everything came out perfect, we'd be paying two and three quarters bill. That would be the best case scenario for second one. The worst case scenario for us is, either way, we go to Macedonia, it's still going to be three quarters of a mil in November of 2017. We're still going to have to ask for that because just of the cost that are they're going. Some, it's a variable that we can't control internally. There's there's costs that it just can't be controlled. So, but it keeps our pledge. We said when we when we ran for office, we weren't going to raise taxes or ask the uh, uh, presidents for any increase for four years. Well, in November of 2017. We will have kept that pledge, and we'll be asking for three quarters of a million fire. Now, worst case scenario for fire, if we had to build a new fire station, it's probably going to be a total of five and three quarters million. So, at, the, at those costs, because they're five years in a row, bam, bam, bam. And just for the record, there is talks right now with uh, the district and unionization. That has nothing to do with it. Whatever, they, whatever the guys get in the union, this has nothing to do with it. That's not even factored in here. It has nothing whatsoever to do with these costs. They're, uh, they deserve their wage increase. I don't know what it's going to be. They earned it. That's not the problem. The personnel is not the problem. The service isn't the problem. The costs are skyrocketing. And this, uh, this information uh, can be made available. Uh, we've got nothing to hide. Uh, and the five-year plans, public record. Uh, the repair plans are public record. Uh, so there's nothing here. There's no sleight of hand. There's, there's no tricks. No. no. There's and, no and, and, and again, I, th I think that you know when you say 750, that's going to stabilize our costs for at least five years. It'll stabilize our costs. Right now, our costs are increasing every quarter when we have these meetings. I mean, it's just you never know what's next. So. I mean, I know how I feel about it. I don't. I mean, I think you guys feel the same way by listening to the two of you. So, I make clarification just for the group here. We split the bill between Sagmore Hills and Northfield Center based on tax valuation of property. So, Sagmore Hills pays sixty-four point seven eight of all fire bills. That is our number. When I go through the bills to pay the bill, and Dave knows this is our representative, I go through with a very fine tooth comb and look at every bit of it, and it's 64.78. That's our portion. So, just to clarify, the numbers that were read were not the total numbers of the fire department that Paul went through. That is only Sagamore Hills Township share, not the full amount. I just want to be clear of that. Because if you add in the other 35.22, which is Northfield Center, then you would have that full number. But we're in this township, and we're going to address it from the numbers of Sagamore Hills. And that's how we went through, and Paul and I went through the numbers, and we're very specific about those. So our number is 64.78. And I've said this multiple times over the past several years. We do have a fire levy, and one in every $3.00 comes out of that fire levy, all the rest comes out of the general fund. We do not produce enough money in our current fire levy to fund the fire department. Two thirds of it comes out of the general fund on average. One third comes out of those taxes collected from the taxpayers based solely on that set aside money. So hopefully that does some definition clarification for folks. And, and just to recap, um, I don't think any of us take this lightly. Yeah. Um, obviously, resident safety is our number one priority when it comes to this. Um, and just like dispatch, I know that you know people thought that, that there was going to be delay in service. Dispatch, the transfer of dispatch went so smooth. I don't think anybody knew that it changed. Um, and and I'm assured that Macedonia wouldn't be offering this if they didn't do their homework and know that they could staff this because. I mean, lives are at stake. Well, let's clarify that too.